Algebra 1, Lesson 101, Factorable Denominators. So the problems we're going to be dealing with are like these. So we've got some abstract fractions going on here, um, and I need to add them. But the problem with adding them is I have to find a common denominator. Now, since this is an x squared minus an x minus a 12, and this is an x minus a 4, common denominator would be nuts because I would have to take both of these numbers and I would have to set this in parentheses and then I'd have to set this in parentheses this would be one number this would be the other number and the common denominator would be massive that would be insane so instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna look to factor a denominator before we add let's go to our work paper okay so I've got the same problem over here and again in order to add these two fractions I need a common denominator but th that would be nuts with this trinomial Luckily, though, we do have this thing called trinomial factoring. We can look at this x2, x1, x none term and see if we can factor it like this, right? And so if we factor it, we know the first term is going to be x. If this is a minus, that means we're going to have a plus and a minus. Now we have to ask ourselves, what can multiply to 12 but then add to negative 1? Well, that would be 4 and 3. If we have positive 3, negative 4, they add up to negative 1. They multiply to negative 12. Now, what this does when we rewrite our denominator like this, now we have two numbers, and this one could be in parentheses too. So now the common denominator is much more simple. I don't have to multiply by x squared minus x minus 12. All I have to do to get a common denominator is multiply by x plus 3. So I'm going to take this fraction, I'm going to multiply it by 1, written with x plus 3. All right, if I do that, I get the common denominator. Uh, the numerator over here is going to become px plus 3p, right, through distributive property. And actually, did they distribute it? Yes, they did. Um, and then, um, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. This is a negative p. All right, so negative p times negative s, that would be negative, and that would also be a negative. Okay, so our numerator now that we've got the common denominator is going to be 6x minus px minus 3p and then the common denominator is x plus 3 x minus 4 and I've successfully added um, I've successfully added the the two numbers now sometimes the book will tell you to go ahead and foil these again I'm not gonna make you do that uh, I think it's easier to read this way so you can leave your denominators unfactored if we're checking homework and I tell you it's wrong just remind me and uh, we'll go from there uh, but this is a good final answer. Um, if you want to FOIL the denominator, your final answer could also be 6x minus uh, px minus 3p over x squared minus x minus 12. And that would be if you FOILed the denominator again. Well, off camera. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take this. We'll do one more example. Let me find the hardest one for you so that way you're not surprised on your homework. Hey, here we go. This one's pretty tough. Okay. One second, I'll make it magically appear on the page. Ta-da! Okay. Uh, this is a minus 6, by the way. I made a mistake while I was writing. Uh, so, again, we're going to look at the denominators. We're going to try to factor them because these are madness numbers. I don't even know where to begin as far as finding the common denominator if I couldn't factor them. So let's start with factoring. This one on the left, trinomial factoring, we know pretty well. This one's not too scary. I'm going to get x and x. That's a minus 6, so one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Now, what times what will equal 6 but add up to positive 1? Well, that's going to be positive 3 and negative 2. Okay, so I've got this denominator completely rewritten. Now, this one, I've only got two terms. Can I factor this? Yes. We're not going to use trinomial factoring, though. We're going to factor a greatest common denominator. So remember, when you have binomials and you need to factor them, you either want to look for a difference of two squares or a greatest common denominator. This one has a common denominator of x. So this one becomes x times x plus 3. Okay? So now what we've got is I've got two kind of different looking denominators, but they can both be fixed. Okay? So the one on the left, the only thing that I'm missing for the least common multiple is x. So I can multiply this one by x over x. Right? This one, I'm missing x minus 2. So this one gets multiplied by x minus 2 over x minus 2. All right. So when I multiply those, my common denominator is going to be x times x plus 3 times x minus 2. 
right? So when I multiply these, that's what I get for both denominators. Now what I really need to figure out is the numerators and then put those on top of that. So when I multiply x times 4x plus 2, we use distributive property. This is going to become 4x squared plus 2x, okay? And then I've got negative 4. I'm going to go ahead and move this negative right there. Negative 4 times x gives me negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2 gives me plus 8. All right, so now I've got this numerator, and I want to see if I can add like terms before I write it over here in my answer. Like terms I can add are the x's. So 2x minus 4x is going to be negative 2x. So the final numerator I'm going to get is going to be 4x squared minus 2x plus 8. And again, like I said before, you can leave your denominator factored. I'm okay with that. Um, or the book will sometimes give it like, um, the book will give you the answer. You know, what? actually, no, this time the book left the denominator factored. You know what? Just, just leave the denominator factored like this. Don't, don't do that. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, let me know on Moodle and I will see you in class.